Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian. And I'm Ethan. And today we have a Brawl Machine Battle Report for you. So today I'm deci- I decided to drop uh, Infernals for uh, for a Brawl Machine game. I wanted to give them a shot because I don't think a lot of people are messing with them so much because Hearts just... It's a really attractive theme, but when you're not able to play your horrors in Brawl Machine, it's it probably isn't the best thing in the world for you to be doing. So I decided to kick it off with Fiora the Forsaken. I think she's a really awesome caster, uh, especially for Brawl Machine because you can't use Zadaroth. At 75 points, that's where things get weird because Zadaroth just feels like a better Fiora. Um, so for her battle group, I've decided to put in an Indicter and a Hand of Judgment. Then I've brought Nicaea, a Rack, then a full unit of Howlers and a min unit of Choir. The Howlers are pretty chunky in terms of points in this list, but I think that when you give them the plus two mat, they can really deal with a lot of uh, polarizing things in Brawl Machine. So we'll see how this uh, runs out for her. I think it should be fine. For the specialists, I decided to bring uh, Eilish Garrity, the Occultist. So this is Eilish 1. Uh, a wretch is in there for the Entropic Aura, and then I bought, put uh, Great Princess Regna Gravnoy in the sideboard. She didn't really feel like I, I didn't feel like I wanted her in the main board uh, right away. I think Nicaea filled the slot a little better, uh, so I'm still really like not 100% sure how this list shakes out. But the specialists feel pretty decent to me in order of in, in terms of getting everything that I need to get into the list. And then this week, um, for the first time ever playing Kador. I decided, I was talking with a group chat, we were talking over some stuff, and like we came on to Old Witch 1, and I was like, man, that feat's probably really good in Brawl. I haven't played against her since the the weird time with it. Scrapjack getting advanced movement, she could top a feat almost reaching your board edge. There was that, I think that was the same time where she could like sack pawn to a winter guard carriage too. Yep, that was super fun. Uh, so I ended up going with old the Old Witch of Kador, so like it is, it feels circle light. Uh, she comes with Scrapjack. I'm in Jaws of the Wolf, of course, uh, with a Juggernaut, a Devastator. And then for my solos, I got Yuri, Widget, and then a free unit of Chaosi, and then with Middle Widowmaker Scouts. And then for my specialists, I have a Marksman, a Forge Seer, and a Mechanics, and then a Grey Lord Adjunct. <laughs> So I had won the roll to go first on this one. Again, we had no special bonuses, so it was kind of just the natural win. Um, Ethan ended up sticking me on this uh, on this side of the table because my... Uh, also, I guess before I get too much further, I should say that um, we're trying out the new Syzygy. 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 Uh, scenario for Brawl Machine. This was in Update 4. Uh, it looked a little weird. It's not as weird, maybe, as the... Uh, the one with a zone within a zone thing, which we'll probably try next. But um, this one is really strange because it kind of like makes the terrain not super matter a whole lot because you're just fighting over this middle area. Uh, it's kind of, it gets things moving fast and it's just a grind in the middle. But uh, for me, the reason why Ethan's got me on this side is because of that stupid pool of water. Um, the buildup, I guess, is we need to force to the middle and my howlers don't have pathfinder and they can't take up the same space so like with the forest and the building where it is there's not really a good way for me to swing around so my my only like lane of effective uh like influence is this small little space between the building and the forest and that pool kind of makes it so i can't spread out so i'm down here hanging out and you'll notice that there's some cards around that building. It kind of uh, got put in the perfect spot to block the all of the action. So, the the everything happens within this like small, twelve inch circle, and it's gonna block it all. So my turn one, uh, I picked my side like Brian said. I just wanted to try and put the force more on his side because like a lot of my all my stuff has Pathfinder thanks to the theme and as you may notice we once again don't put out a forest for <laughs> jaws of the wolf because we are like the best jaws players uh so i'm just measuring some threats i know i'm gonna be feeding with old witch because he went first he couldn't physically get in the zone and if you don't know old witch one's feet is uh, if you advance uh more than just changing your facing in her control uh you take a pow 14 and warrior miles damage get knocked down so like, all of his arm 17 dudes, I just need a 4 to knock them down and get some free damage into this normally beefy 8-wound unit. So that's pretty legit. 
Uh, so there I'm just running up Widowmakers because I'm going to be feeding, but I'm scared of Nissia drifting in AoE so he can get a free Road to War. Scrapjack runs up to stay just behind the forest. Old Witch puts Avatar of Slaughter onto Scrapjack, and then she is unseen pathing forward to teleport to him, and I'm just trying to measure where I have to place to catch as much as I can. Because I want to catch the zones, but I don't want to get too far up and maybe get a heavy on me, because I don't think he can get to me through the woods, but I just feel like it's worth playing it safe. So she goes up, she feeds, camps a few, and then my speed four boys all run eight. Uh, and my field marshal is Apparition, which is, feels like just a lifesaver on these speed four guys. Uh, Widget runs to the flag where she's going to live. Flying high, being on a flag that far back feels really good. And she's still fast enough to come up and repair if I need to. And then Chaosi just kind of hide from Nissia. So turn two, I've got to kind of mitigate um, Old Witch 1's feet. I get to upkeep everything for free. Uh, and for the upkeeps I've got, they're, they're all where you really would expect them to be. Uh, death marches on the Howlers just to give them the extra map because they have Vengeance naturally anyways. Uh, I have Firestarter on the Hand of Vengeance because he's got the fun uh, Fuel for the Flames ability. So that cranks his... Uh, his uh mace up to pow 20 all the time and then uh hell rot is on the indicter just because i even though ethan's got some good high pow shots or high pow jacks in here like i guess with just the juggernaut um arm 23 is really difficult to deal with even with something like that and then uh i've got road to war on uh fiora 4 Yep, and you got those free upkeeps turn one from the theme. Yeah, she gets them out right away and then gets to upkeep them for the rest of the game for free, so it's just really good. Oh, so here Nessia shot and drifted, and some I think, cute stuff happened. Yeah, so we, we got to clip... Um, you clipped Yuri, Scrapjack, and Old Witch. You did no damage to Scrapjack or Yuri, but she did one point to Old Witch, which procs the bond... Uh, to give uh, Scrapjack plus two speed and plus two to attack and damage rolls. Yeah, so that it was cute for you and not for me. So uh, Nicaea is just, I was hoping to get some early drifts to kind of get Road to War to happen earlier. Um, so I decide to start moving my Warjacks because those I'm not too worried about. But then Ethan just rolls like crazy dice for damage on these and almost takes, I think you take out a full column on the Hand of Judgment. Yeah, because that's dice minus five. I did six damage. Yeah, it hurt. And unlike Sunhammer, it's worth noting that this feat damage can proc more than once if you... Because it just says when you advance and end your movement. So if you road to war, you repo, you... Uh, what's another good one? Overtake. Overtake. Like, you can just keep taking POW 14s because Sunhammer says normal movement. This does not. So there, that holler can't kind of see him behind the building. He got knocked down. Yeah, for for the most part, what I'm doing right now is I'm I think I've got two howlers in the zone right now and three in the back, so I know that Ethan will have to do something with them, and that just allows me to uh, get um, vengeance on those pieces to get them for, further forward so they can start influencing the table. So I got a little bit of like mitigation of old witch's feet, and I didn't lose those front two howlers, so at least they're still there. The indicter didn't take any damage at all. It's really difficult to do anything to him with Hellrot on him. Armor 23 is really nasty, and he's also just a really good heavy. Um, I feel like Fiora 4 really gets a lot of mileage out of these things. They're just phenomenal jacks, and they are probably the only jack chassis in the entirety of Menoth I like the look of. So my feet did its job. It kept his infantry out of the zones, and I got some free damage. Like, it, it could be argued to maybe be worth saving it another turn, just for that way, like, to set the lines of engagement even more. But now with Apparition, like, my jacks pretty much threaten the zone. And there you can see we pick up the building. So I'm fine with it keeping the Howlers back. And, like, if I have the focus, I can leverage Murder of Crows to try and make a cloud, play some stuff. But I feel like I'm going to be setting my jacks pretty far forward this turn. So I think I'm okay with that. So there they apparition forward, scrapjack apparitions into the woods. That's some cute ch tech you can do where you hide behind the woods and then you apparate into them, which backs up. And then doing some allocation. So now thanks to the bond and avatar slaughter, which I upkeep for free thanks to great power, scrapjack is sitting at POW 16 effectively. 
because he's power 12, then Avatar gives him plus 2, and then the Bond gives him plus 2, the melee and damage rolls. So he's sitting at respectable power 16 for, like, a free light. That's pretty good. I mean, effectively, how many points would you rate him? Nine? Yeah, I think, ten? like, nine or ten is probably not uh, not the worst spot for him. Because she has 18 Warjack points, and you, you'd assume she'd have at least 26. Yeah, 20, 28 was probably, like, the bare minimum, I would say, for her. Yeah, so I think he's easily worth nine or ten for an arc node. With that bond. Yeah. She doesn't and, have like a damage buff or a speed buff outside of Apparition. So I feel like 10 points, 9 points is pretty decent for his position. And with Avatar of Slaughter, like, man, does he mulch infantry. Because fun fact, his feet have reach <laughs> and they're yeah. not linked to his system. Like, so you, so can you can never can't take cripple it his arms. Yep. You have to kill him to make him not worth attacking with. And his grid is phenomenal. Like, the only, like, susceptible system on him is his arc node but like his body or his movement and his cortex are spread out uh, so there i'm moving Widowmakers because actually a few of those uh howlers i've rolled enough on damage so one of them's down to i want to say three boxes and then there i snake eyes and unfortunately the back one doesn't have line of sight around the woods there so i have to shoot the other one yeah you were hoping to be able to take down one of these but the guy missing really kind of put a damper on that yep because that's the guy in the way of the juggernaut getting on the indictor indictor and i like to call him the indictor i think some people call him indictor but i'm pretty sure it's indictor yeah so this is unfortunate missing the snake eyes on a knockdown guy so i gotta try and engineer a way of clearing him out because i really would want to i wanted to clear both of those guys so here i believe i'm gonna try and stay in my clam jack form so i'm slamming that way i don't open up going directly forward i got my three inches we both got to touch butts because our models hang over like crazy yeah i think it's more you like i hover a little bit but you're like hunched bit, yeah. over mm -hmm. he's and, like halfway over his base and my boosted pow tile slam damage leaves him on one yep so i'm super stoked with the way that this is all going out for me like that howler i didn't expect to survive just to junk just to chunk up time really and uh, now he's still there, so that's cool. Yep, so I had to get tricky, and I charged with a Kayazi through my dudes, thanks to acrobatics. Uh, so I'm onto the front one. Auto hit, knockdown, anatomical. Sidestep, auto hit, because he's knocked down, anatomical, because they were both on one box, and knockdown. So then I just get to sidestep. I'm out of engagement range of Nysia, so like I'd hope to engage her, but that's not happening. And there, just confirming... So then I charge. I know I'm dice minus four, but I'd rather get into him, get some chip damage. Maybe I get lucky, but I there I don't. I roll a seven on three dice for the charge. I'm hoping just maybe cripple one arm. If you get lucky and cripple his shield, then like things are looking up. But another boosted damage roll at dice minus four does one. Yeah, so the indictor's holding up pretty well. Yeah, which is kind of unfortunate because i don't have anything else really that can go into him because the widowmakers had to clear the lane and yuri i wanted to go for hand of judgment just because like maybe with a pow 13 weapon master i think he can cripple an arm and i'd rather tie up the jack and make him have to kill yuri who would be with tree walker in the woods at depth 16 against melee and then like he'd have to risk a free strike which a pow 13 weapon master you typically don't want to risk I think Scrapjack is over there right oh, now. Oh, that's Scrapjack. Scrapjack's yeah. going. Scrapjack goes, and then Yuri ends up doing stuff. Yeah, because Scrapjack walks, cause, and then he misses. Yeah, because I think initial. you wanted to charge first, but then decided to walk, so missing your first initial was actually good for you for that one. Yep, because I thought I had the charge, but I forgot about the bond, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm speed eight. I could just walk there for days. Yeah, and he blows up damage rolls. Like, you've knocked out my shooting arm, and I think my movement might be close to out. Uh, missing that first attack, I rolled Snake Eyes for damage there, so a couple of the rolls went well, and then a few of them went bad. Yeah. At dice minus three. It, yeah, it averages out, but the Hand of Judgment isn't feeling super hot. And then there, that what Master Charge... It does, like, six damage, so it's not terrible, but it's not great. No. So, but his arm, his right arm and his Cortex are up. Yep, he's just got his club and his movement. And then we both or score no, club one. and Cortex, his movement's out. Yep. And we both score one because neither of us can contest each other's flags.
So I feel like I've got a pretty fair fight set up now. Old Witch's feet is gone, so my Howlers can actually start doing things. Uh, I upkeep everything for free because that's just what I get to do. Um, I'm checking to see if my one Howler that's not in the water can get onto the uh, Chaosi Eliminator, but Ethan's just like a hair out from being it within the five. So uh, it's I'm trying to just figure out where the rest of these Howlers are going to go. They walk up and kind of get out of the pool a little bit. Um, the other one, I, I wasn't even in range to uh, get in on the Juggernaut, so he's just kind of walking up a little bit and, uh, and hanging out. Now, since Ethan charged me with his Juggernaut and did minimal damage, uh, and it has Hellrot on it, I get to activate uh, re the retaliation part of it, which just gives me, like, basically vengeance. So I'm uh, now f looking at where Old Witch is, and I'm doing the math on what do I need to get to her. Uh, I'm realizing that there's a good chance that I'm just in on being able to get Old Witch if I can get my Vengeance trigger, my Retaliation trigger, to go up for far enough to then trigger Road to War and then have my one-inch reach to get on Old Witch. The one thing I got to worry about is the Forest and the Devastator because the Devastator will block my charge, of course, and the Forest will suck because I'm a Menoth Warjack and I can't do Pathfinder anything anytime ever. So I decide to walk up to the position where that green base is right now, and I think I take a whack at the... I don't remember if it was the Juggernaut or the or the Eliminator. I would have needed a 9 to hit the Eliminator, so I'm pretty sure I might have went for the Juggernaut because I was thinking that, best case scenario, the, the Juggernaut takes a few points of chip damage, and then it'll be easier for me to take out because I've got another plan that I'm trying to set up over here, and that's how screwed is the Hand of Judgment if he tries to walk over and destroy the Juggernaut that's engaging my Indicter. The way it's set up right now, I would take a free strike from Scrapjack, but I could stay in the front arc and engagement of Yuri. So that's the one that I'm a little bit more worried about. He doesn't have a lot of damage left. So I think uh, there's a little bit of sloppiness on my part here in that I'm going back and forth between my maintenance and control a little bit because I'm like, I forgot that I needed to pull off the rack this turn. And uh, I think I'm rebalancing my allocations because the hand of judgment isn't going to be able to accumulate off of anything soulless um, because I have plans for those howlers instead of just running around to give them a free focus. Uh, so I think I'm trying to figure out what it's, what's going on here. I think that was my, that was my to check to see if the rack blows up roll and uh, it doesn't. So we're fine there. I get the indicter out of the way because those flags are going to be really annoying for me to work around. And the green base is where he exists right now. So object number one is to just try and mitigate as many free strikes as I can, and the Eliminator would be able to take one of those. So I walk up the three Howlers, and we're just going to overcommit to try and get her out of there. Um, a six, these guys go, they're, they're mat seven, they go up to nine. The six should have missed, but I think we've, we I did the math wrong in my head, and I was like, oh, you're mat 11 with Death March, and I was like, I don't know where I got the mat nine from. <laughs> yep, so we ended up, he, he, we confirmed, he confirmed it as a hit, and I was like, oh, well, yeah, I'll just do it. Not that I was like, oh, I know my guys are Matt 9 and they didn't miss, but I, I was just, he convinced me. He was like, no, they're the Matt this. I'm like, okay, well, it looks like you got the Yeah, don't look the at the card here. in front of you. No, I should have. So I had to go find my little steppers uh, because like the, the way that I need to swing the, uh, the indicter around is a little bit more nuanced. So I want to try and get the max amount of movement and make sure he ends up in the same in the space where he needs to to make sure that um, I'm not clipping woods because if that happens I can't make it and I can't clip the devastator because if he clips the devastator I can't make it either. So it's a lot of this is where probably more of the tedium that I think some more casual players might not appreciate when it comes to War Machine, but I don't want to take to make a move that I couldn't make in order to, because this is Ethan's caster. If this were like me going after a, a random little model, I probably wouldn't be putting as much effort into this, but with the the nuance of how much I need to move into the very perfect place, and we have the tools to do this, we've got a couple precision lasers, and uh, the, the steppers and the bases and all that other fun stuff. Like this is, as long as I can confirm the the that I can make it, then I feel fine and I don't feel bad for taking out Ethan's caster right now. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a lot of tedium, I guess. There's no better way to explain it. But I think after we, after we m m 
wiggle the base back and forth a little bit just to get it to where it needs to. We confirmed that the position that I had wasn't going to quite get me there. So I had to kind of readjust where the model ends up a little bit. And uh, the, because I think right now what my problem was was the the way we did it, I could make it, but I'd be taking a couple free strikes. Yeah, you take a free strike from the juggernaut and you're worried about the crit freeze. So you wanted yep. to give... Uh, there you decide just to take it. I hit but didn't crit. And then at dice minus... It's, it, I don't get my shield, so it's dice minus two. And you dropped Hellrock because you're going to swap it to hand. Yeah, to which I shouldn't have dropped it. There was no reason for me to drop uh, it. I rolled abysmal and did basically nothing anyway. Yep, and I, I that is, I did drop Hellrot. I don't know why I was thinking drop Hellrot to put it on the... Because uh, you have resourceful. Yeah, because I, I just wasn't thinking. Even if I didn't have resource, yeah, yeah, I have resourceful, so I didn't need I was just like stuck in a world of I've never played a resourceful caster before. But um, the choir moves up then and puts out battle because that's what I'm going to need to help get me through some of the juggernaut here. Because uh, and, and the juggernaut doesn't matter even that much anymore because um, I'm not going to be taking a free strike from him because I already did. So uh, the, I'm still like kind of working on different parts of this plan all at once, even though they're not extremely important anymore. So uh, I think we're... You're attacking the juggernaut... No, because I I end up taking a free strike to. No, you're you're literally punching the juggernaut with Fiora. Oh yeah, that's right. Fiora came up, and this is this is the fun one because we uh, I she has crit shred, and I hit, and I think we were trying to figure out if crit ends up going off of other crits, and I think I ended up pulling. You critted three, three times. times in a row. Yeah, it was really really interesting. So like I'm I've been messing around with black spot casters a lot lately. So like black spot doesn't let you get extra attacks off of those, and uh, I, I'm gonna I'll stop because this is unfortunate. So my my hand of judgment walked out and scrapjack just blew up the damage roll. So I was hoping to be able to take out the juggernaut in case things don't go well for me here. But um, the avatar or I wanted to call him the avatar, but uh, the scrapjack just blows up the hand of judgment. And uh, that means that I'm super all in on this and I have to take a free strike from the devastator. Which also rolls abysmal. Yep. And if I would have just kept Hellrod on him, I guess never mind, because the hand of judgment moved out anyways, and that's when I'd be juggling him. I already juggled Hellrod over there, so Hellrod didn't even save him. But uh, anyways, the Indicter gets in, so I boost the charge because I don't pay to charge, which is really nice with this, with Fiora 4. And we do a good amount of damage with her. I think it leaves her on five boxes. Yep. And uh, I go in for my second, not my second initial. I, I think I hit with a, maybe I re, maybe I said, no, I won't take the shield, or maybe I just said The shield was crippled, so. Oh, yeah. So we didn't do the shield, but I boosted. And then at first, we were leaving her on one box, and then I forgot about battle, so it gave her an extra four points of damage. So um, she went out, uh, and that was, I think, the big reason why that ended up happening was because you didn't uh, real. I thought, when I first looked at Fiora's card, even I read it, I read it as retaliation, and I thought retaliatory strike, but it actually gives him a movement bo a, a movement shenanigan at the beginning, and I think that was something that you didn't factor in. Yeah, because I forgot about that. Otherwise, Old Witch would have, she only walked two inches back to stay in the zone to be cute for next turn. She would have walked five inches straight back and not died. Yep, but at so. least that's what's good about Brawl Machine. We get another game, so that doesn't happen again. For the sideboard, I didn't really opt to change anything in this one. I feel like Nicaea is a good Road to War trigger, and uh, I know that uh, Regna could be a good one, and it's a, uh, my list is pretty small in general, so like ha being able to summon another, uh, another just a whore in general and get another gun if I wanted it or something would be nice, but uh, Nicaea feels good right now, so I decide to keep her in and just see how that rolls for me because I don't feel like I really got a great representation of what she was going to do in the list for me given that the assassination happened like it did but uh maybe later we might switch some things up but i feel good about it right now and then i didn't swap anything out because i didn't get really to test like the chaosy like i can swap out a few of the soul packages with the force there or, like yuri's not coming out but i was debating like do i drop the Widowmakers for two solos do i drop the chaosy because they're free for a free solo but i didn't really get to test enough with the first game so I just decided not to sideboard anything and try and see how the second game went. Because I think if I don't let Old Witch die, I'm okay because of my feet. So since I lost the last game, I auto-win the roll. And I opt to go first this time. 
because I'd rather get up the board and do work. So there I'm just apparitioning up. And Brian made me switch sides because he wanted to get away from the pool, which my footprint is pretty small. And all my stuff has Pathfinder except the Chaosi. So like life is fine for me. So there I'm running up Widowmaker's max distance, staying behind the woods. So that way Hand of Judgment can't get like a cheeky spray line. Yuri runs up into the woods, but more than three inches back just to get as much space as he could, just so he can threaten the whole zone if he wants to get something into the zone before I feet. Because Scrapjack runs 12. Those guys run 8. Because uh, Old Witch, I had debated feeding top of 1, because if I place 2 inches in front of Scrapjack, my feet just is like 3 inches short of the Howlers. But I didn't think it was worth it, because he could just skirt around and then come into the zone next turn. So I'm going to force him to have to give me some stuff next turn and then try and leverage the feet there. And there I'm just staying back so that way I don't give him casual drifts. So beginning turn two, I we were talking about it and uh, I, Resourceful lets me upkeep model or upkeep spells on my battle group but not on the unit so I'll, probably this whole game i'm going to be playing up one focus so i apologize for that at least this way it's out of out of the way so uh just keep that in mind i guess if you're going to be playing resourceful people like fiora don't upkeep spells for free on your uh on your little unit dudes There's i think only like four or five resourceful casts for like magnus one centurion fiora four uh i can't i can't remember i can't recall that all of that either but um i decide to uh instead of backing off and being a little bit coy with my army because of the old witch feed i decide to just jam it forward as far as i can this way ethan needs defeat and he needs to kill as much as he can next turn uh so i don't so he doesn't cat so this way he can't capitalize on my my uh, army being there so doing some apparition moves uh because i gotta do that before focus but I, I instinctively put the power up out there just because out of habit, then I'm like, oh, yeah, Apparition. And then you, you forgot to move Nicaea. Yeah, so like for it. the third time, I think I forgot to move Nicaea. I don't know what it is about. Maybe it's because they're not painted. I don't know. But like I, I think even in my normal 75-point games, I just forget to move her. And I think I actually forgot to Apparate. <laughs> so that's cute. Yeah, I don't see them moving. Nope, because I got excited about Widowmaker's Hunting Choir. Yeah, I think you got real. Yeah, you you got real giddy about killing choir. Yep. So um, they're all like I got them in pods so I can see through the jacks because the jacks aren't base to base. Just need fives to hit. First one misses because there are four choir and four widowmakers. That's so the I, widowmaker life. Yep. The so. unit that was too good to be fa two and now you get to experience them. Yep. Uh, so I'm hitting and I'm killing choir. So I hit all of them except that first one. So like if I could have took Choir out top of one, that would have been pretty sweet. And like I think me missing my Apparate moves this turn is fine because I'm not going that far up the board. And like I'm feeding to make him come into the zone into me. Because on this scenario, it doesn't feel dead. It just feels like a grind because it's like I'm going to score my flag. You score your flag at the same time. Like reaching your opponent's flag and clearing the circle, and clearing the middle flag just seems like hard. There, Scrapjack ran. Witch goes, she puts a gallows into the guy who's in the zone, boosts damage, and kills him. Doesn't tough, so now, like, there's nothing in the zone, so he has to come in under feet, and I was like, you know what, I got extra focus, I'm gonna do this again. So I pull that guy three inches, now into the zone, boost damage, do not kill him. But I leave him on, like, three or four. Yeah, it's not a lot left. No. Luckily, I believe I pulled him into a Chaosy threat. And there I'm at, like, I feet. Now I'm just deciding where I want to walk. Because I did my spells first, just to try and get some free damage. Not free, because it's my focus, but I'm not doing anything with my focus this turn. And you're not real threatened either, so... No. So I'm hiding behind the woods, and now the Chaosy, he is, he is just in charge threat, I want to say. Yeah, I think it was just barely. Yeah. Yep. I pulled like if I had pulled you two inches, she would have been out. Uh, the other one runs to hide behind the building, so maybe I can make a play for the flag next turn. And here I'm debating: do I combo strike? Because you are on two boxes. Yeah. I remember this because I was like, yeah, if because... I take both my initials and hit, I'd opt to not combo strike, but then like it just kills you. Yep. 
So I sidestep back. Yeah, you only needed fives with her, so it was pretty, pretty not, it wasn't that risky. It's just after the Widowmaker missing the five, I was like, I don't want to risk it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get to put up a murder of crows, mostly because I think I forgot and I got excited about doing the gallows. So like the Devastator leads in front of the Juggernaut because I'm not scared of it getting one rounded. So with the old witch's feet up, I've, I've got to kind of make some weird choices here. I can either go into it and just deal with the couple knockdowns, or I can try and play a little more coy. Thankfully, like, my battle group is, um, I don't have a large battle group by means. There's a lot of points in it, but um, I at least can utilize them to not have to worry about the feet so much. So uh, the Howlers, I think I decided to activate them, and I was going to move one up a little bit further, but realized it was in the feet range. So I pulled it off and tried to make make sure they weren't in uh, they weren't getting into old witch's feet. Maybe that happens later. But right now, Nicaea is going because I want to deal with the Widowmakers. They're they're just going to be a pain in the butt later, and they can just kind of pluck out uh, Howlers for free if they take any damage. So she decides to take a lucky shot at one of the Widowmakers, which clips two of them and pulls them both off the table. So that was a good deal for her. She has run and gun, but I choose not to do it because I just didn't do it, not because I thought that this was the best place for her or anything. Um, I just didn't didn't let, didn't have it happen. Uh, next up, I'm getting the, uh, the Hand of Judgment to Road to War off of the Nicaea shot, and that causes me to take some damage from Old Witch, but I think it was only like one or two that damage. That was five damage. Oh, I'm sorry. I must have not I seen that mark ten. out. So <laughs> that, that's just story of his life. So now I'm seeing after Road to War, if I can get into Yuri, because if I can get him off the table, it's less of a, he's like a really powerful attack that I want gone. Um, and unfortunately my road to war wasn't in the right angle. Cause like I kind of put this plan together after I had moved here. I wasn't really thinking forward too much. Um, so I'm just, I'm just out of being able to draw a line of sight to him with the spray attack. Um, instead I decide to, uh, just kind of walk up and take a spray at the Chaosi just to get that off the table. Um, this way I get my ranged, uh, my boosted ranged attack and I, I think I have, to focus on me because I thought I had different plans when I was putting this together. So we end up taking out the uh, the Chaosi Eliminator and we start the Devastator on fire even though we don't do any damage there. It's really worth noting that the the um, the Hand of Judgment is within three inches of those two Widowmakers behind it. The Indicter gets to Road to War off of getting the uh, kill from the Chaosi Eliminator, so that just puts him a little further forward to make his charge a little bit easier. And he doesn't... I think he might have not taken any damage from the Old Witch thing. It's kind of hard for one. him. Okay. Base minus nine. So he took his one, which is... It, he's definitely, like, a champion for this game. Like, sitting at arm 23 is really nice for him. Yeah, I have no armor, like, debuff, so it's kind of rough. So I think here I decide to get a little cute with Fiora and go for a scorn on one of the Widowmakers and uh, pull one off there to get my spite to go up a little bit earlier than uh, than expected. And uh, then I feet to get the other Widowmaker. So now all the Widowmakers are gone. I've got an extra spite and I'm camping like two or three. Three it looks like. Um, the Howlers are running around. I try to keep them out of Old Witch's feet, but I'm trying to kind of put up some bodies to block for... Uh, like a unexpected um, scrap deck charge, but yeah. I they're not spaced quite the best. Yeah, you had to run one into the feet, and we had talked about like if I run scrap jack, I can unseen path and then just buy attacks with old witch. So I think you were just trying to body block the run play. Yep. So uh, the indicter goes and takes a little bit more damage from the feet, not a ton, but he charges the devastator, and he is under battle. I was able to get the. Uh, the one choir member close enough to battle him without dying to old witch and here i'm trying to just put some damage into the devastator i was hoping to cripple something uh unfortunately i spread the damage out in the perfect way you take out his right arm oh i guess i took it one arm down at least the clamjack losing one arm is not a huge deal because now unlike mark ii they always are armor 23. You can't cripple their arms to get rid of it. Yeah, that kind of made them bad for in the in the Mark II era. Like, Reign of Death was really cool for the, the meta that was around, but, like, 
the armor didn't matter so much, but now the armor is really relevant. Yep. So fire didn't go out on Devastator. It did no damage at dice minus 11. So now I'm doing my apparate. Scrapjack apparates into the woods so he can see through it. Uh, the Devastator gets into an angle because I'm going to be trying to do some cute stuff. Juggernaut just apparates forward a little bit. And then I'm just going to be doing my allocations. Oh, we also, I now that we've got a really good shot of it, the I still haven't grabbed a widget yet. I had an opportunity and didn't do it. So we're just using a Titania from Malifaux to represent her. Because if I didn't tell you, it'd just look like a primed widget probably. Yeah, it, she has wings. So I give two to Scrapjack. I believe I give two to the Juggernaut. And then... I think the Devastator just sits on one. So that means I am sitting on three right now with Old Witch. I'm trying. I think I can get to Fiora. I want to repay him for last game where he got to my <laughs> caster. So I'm like, this is what you get. I'm unfortunately out of distance to walk backwards to my flag. Because I'm going to try and clear the flag by doing some shenanigan throws. And just trying to move stuff out of the zone. But... I had planned then, like, Old Witch walks back to my flag. Uh, What's-her-face runs to the flag in the middle of the board widget, so then I can try and score three. Maybe, or yeah, score possibly three if I get Hand of Judgment out of the zone. It's going to be weird. Uh, but now here I'm measuring six inches because I'm strength 12, so if I throw the jack away, I throw it six inches. So I'm just trying to plan out what to do. Because, uh, like, both my jacks have open fists. Unfortunately, the Devastator, one of his hands is out, so he can't do a two-handed throw. So I end up putting the Juggernaut up, get within my one inch. I force for a one-handed throw and boost the hit. You're so used to throwing around with circle that you said force to throw. Yeah, I know. This is a very circle play. Yeah. And then I beat him on the strength check. I throw him at the Howler. I boost the hit. So now he went straight towards that Howler. Uh, the damage is negligible it doesn't kill the howler it doesn't really do anything to that but now from where i've thrown him directly away he's in the perfect slam lane for the devastator so now the devastator goes and slams him he has the butt slam i need to roll like a three i believe to get to fiona and i roll a five so he slams through the howler onto the fl through fiona onto the flag and then because of least disturbance through the flag he gets shunted off that way so now I've knocked down Fiona. I've knocked down both Howlers because I think it went through both of them too. Yeah, it did. So then, like, the one that was feet of damage, uh, he died. The next one, I believe, is still alive. And then I did some damage that I believe you... It was four damage, and I was, like, debating whether I should shunt it off or not. But I got greedy and decided to save the focus for five. Yep, because Scrapjack is going to be trying to get on her because he has reach. So... And he's fully loaded. The bond is not up, so I upkept Avatar of Slaughter for free. So he's at least a POW 14. And with her being knocked down, it's just auto-hitting dice minus threes. So, like, I feel okay about it. And I believe here, I'm just trying to plan out. I'm being extra cute, and now, like, I apparated within 10. So now I can go with a boosted Gallows. And I'm opting, like, do I save the boost and try and fish for damage, but I need an 8 to hit her because she's def 15? Yeah, she's got surprisingly decent stats. So I hit, I pull her 3 inches, she just hits the howler in front of her because yeah, it goes towards a, the scrap Yeah, not tracking. a whole lot of distance here. But it's dice minus 4 and it's free damage, like, yep. I might as well. And, like, it does a couple points. And then Old Witch walks away because she doesn't want to die again because now she's on zero camp. Just in case this fails... So now I'm measuring a Scrapjack charge range because Hand of Judgment, if you've seen that model with his piddly little mace, <laughs> it has reach for some reason. Like, I think the Indicter's sword is longer than his mace and has one inch reach, and that's, the little mace is just so puny. Yeah, some of those old weapons just don't make sense. So we had the camera die out here, so at least we got to see the fun shenanigans with the slams and stuff, but... Stuff, but the only thing we really missed was Scrapjack's activation. Yep. So Scrapjack charged in, auto-hitting, dice minus three. Things are looking up. And he rolls absolutely terrible. Like, a few of those dice minus threes, I rolled a three or a four. 
It was really great. My charge did like six damage after focus or no before focus. Like mm-hmm. it was bad. Yep. And I think if I recall correctly, Fiora was left on seven boxes. So even if I would have not had the extra focus from upkeeping Death March, um, I would have been alive either way. Yeah, like it it went really bad. Like it seemed like a good idea in my head, but then like Scrapjack just literally didn't do damage. Oh, and then we I think we just peeled peeled away for uh Yuri getting into hand of judgment but just didn't do he did he did a lot of damage just not in a place where it mattered yeah because he couldn't get in on fiona so i'm like i might as well just try and engage the jack and do some damage so i i at least get to scrape by with whatever luck i have here so fiora is sitting okay and Ethan isn't... The thing is, is that Ethan didn't really risk anything with this other than Scrapjack, because that Devastator's still going to be really hard to get rid of. So uh, I decide to pull off the rack, even though it's a little risky. I've got a lot of my army over there. Um, it doesn't blow up, so I can get my full or my full stack plus one, which should be minus one because of the stupid uh, Death March stuff. Um, so I think I'm just trying to figure out what it is I'm needing to do in terms of allocation for my jacks, because... Uh, the Indicter is going to be fine. I can shift it one focus to stand it up and then have it at two and then get it to accumulate up to three so it's got a full stack. And then the the issue is figuring out what to do with uh, the Hand of Judgment. So you'll notice now, it, this time the camera didn't die. Something went weird and the camera stopped again. I don't know what the deal is with it. Maybe I'll need to figure out what it is. But... I had a really long turn. It went from 12 minutes down to 39 seconds, and most of this was just chewing on the Devastator, which I didn't get to kill. And Nicaea ended up uh, going up into a position to take a shot on Widget to try and help me with the scoring game. I ended up rolling in a really good direction, but I ended up overshooting the AoE, so it ended up not landing behind her and didn't even clip Old Witch, so I didn't get anything out of that. Um, The Hand of Judgment ended up getting... uh, Ended up getting Yuri off the table. No, you, oh, no, I, you, you had toughed. one focus. You boosted the hit because I had Tree Walker, and he toughed. Yep, so he's he, I did get him, but I didn't get him. And Fiora was the one who had to go over and destroy uh, Scrapjack. And then she decided, I think after everything was said and done, she was camping two or three. So that's where we're at. I don't know what happened with the thing here. One battery dead, one 10-minute turn lost, but... Uh, at least we got more of this to come. And it's worth noting the indicter went into the juggernaut and oh, yeah, he missed twice in a row. That like, was the one that was the one where I rolled two double ones and just couldn't I couldn't come up on it for anything. Yep, so he ended up crippling the move or he crippled the right arm so the axe on the juggernaut. So now going into my turn, I'm feeling okay scenario wise. Uh like it's just a grind, I'm, but I'm like I'm get, like she survived once. I'm not gonna let it happen again. Yeah, we're still equal points, so it's not like we're in a one of us is in any more of an advantageous position than the other. So I apparate my jacks forward. The juggernaut apparates to get a different angle on the indicter, and old witch just apparates to keep the devastator in control. So I allocate two to the devastator. I believe I give one to the juggernaut. He does a one-handed throw because his right arm is out, but he has an open fist. I beat the strength check, or I believe I tie, and ties go to the attacker. Yep. And I throw him straight away, which lands on Fiona again. It's literally a game of how many times can I knock her down, and then I roll box cars on the collateral damage at dice minus five, so like focus negates it to zero. Yep, so now she's sitting on four boxes. Uh, I think this is where the Devastator goes up and just starts auto-hitting her and takes her out. Yeah, because I was like, do I rain it? One of my fists was out, but I'm like, nah, I just auto-hit with a POW 16, and then I buy three more auto-hitting POW 16s at dice minus one. Yeah, there wasn't much for me to do on that one, given that I was going in. I had so little to deal with what I had in front of me. And like Howlers at POW 13, you'd think they'd be all right, but they just don't come up when you need them to do heavy work. Yeah, like, they're good for infantry mulching, but for this matchup, they don't. They haven't been doing what I want to, especially considering they're an easy target for your, your feet. Yeah, because like, it's dice minus three, and it's normally their like selling point is oh they got eight wounds like vengeance, but like my feet just auto hits them and just is like here's a free dice minus three that doesn't proc vengeance like 
go at it and i knock you down so like it screws over infantry really hard and that's why i wanted to try and see with brawl is like is old witch one's feet too good for brawl and i guess we'll have a talk about that at the end too yeah so for sideboard for me i debated pulling out the howlers to put in like a bunch of soul because it's 15 points in my sideboard 15 points for the howlers it could be an easy swap out but then i'd be i'd be getting eilish a wretch and uh Regna, so I'm not sure if it was the greatest move in the world to do it, but I I I toy, toyed with it for a while, and I said no, I'm just gonna try and not go with this, and and I leave the Howlers in. So again, no changes for me. And then for me, I end up bringing out the Chaosi and swapping in the Widowmaker Marksman because I wanted to try and abuse the woods and maybe get some quick work shots to repo back, or not repo back, but quick work back behind the woods or into Swift the woods. Hunter Swift back. Hunter back, and uh, the Chaosi like. They're in this list for contesting, but on this scenario, like, it's not... Everything contests. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you don't... You're only going to be pushing scenario hard when you've almost tabled your opponent just because, like, it funnels you in a straight line. Like, you have one solo or your caster sit on your flag and everything in your whole army fights in the circle. Especially like, with the way this terrain is on the table, it's really rough to... Like, I, I randomize the table setup, and I feel like this one might be one where you need to, like get a little bit more creative with the way you set it up because like originally when i even generated this thing like the the forest was smack dab in the middle like that's rough well it's like the obstruction on that side the trench the forest over there the wall and like even the building to a small extent the building maybe not so much but like there's four to five terrain pieces on this board that do not matter yep. because the scenario dictates we will never leave that middle 12 inch middle of the board so game three comes around and i've opted to go first but an ethan stuck me back on my junkie side again and my deployment hasn't changed much from the way it was the first game around i think i shuffled over a little bit so i could try and get the howlers to fit in better and here's where i was like i was like man i, I know i'm missing something i was like wait a minute i'm playing jaws <laughs> where's my free woods and like now finally game three i'm throwing it out there and i know you complained about it last time but for me like i love this woods like all my stuff is pathfinder life is good it can like on this scenario like i can plunk it directly in front of my flag and you will never get line of sight to it, but I opt to put it off to the side to do some trickery stuff. But back to you. That on this, my little on this scenario, I don't even... I, there's very little chance of me getting to that flag anyways. Maybe running to contest and give something up, but... I'm more worried about, like, Nissia drifting something. Yeah, that's probably more accurate. So, the my, my goal for this one is just to do the same thing I did last turn. Just kind of jam forward with everything. Uh, I don't want Old Witch's feet controlling me too much, so it really is just running forward. And the upkeeps are in the same place they've always been. So, pretty much the same game plan as the first game, because uh, that's we're back to where we were in that game. Uh, I'm just going to be running up the board, feeding, unseen pathing, getting uh, Avatar of Slaughter onto uh, Scrapjack. I am debating... Uh, putting up like a murder of crows this game or even like iron flushing here's my i forgot to move nicaea again one day <laughs> so Woodmakers run behind the woods because they have pathfinder so i can just walk through it and start shooting the marksman and yuri get a little aggressive and they go up as far as they can behind the woods uh just because i want to threaten farther with them scrapjack runs up completes fort old witch i arc avatar onto him and then, like, here I'm like, oh, do I put Iron Flesh on these guys so they might survive a drift? And I was like, no, Murder of Crows time. So we have to find another AoE 5, I believe, after I Unseen Path forward. I think that just takes me, like, 10 seconds. So I put it next to the forest, over the flag, so now, like, he has no line of sight to my stuff. Yeah, now it just, like, the, the game was already rough with the middle, but now it's got worse in game 3.
so with feet up and the cloud, it, it kind of like puts me in this position of like, there's really not much I can do right now to influence the table. So I think that my thought pattern was, let's just kind of switch it up a little bit and just give you a ton of howlers to go through. Uh, unfortunately, your dice start spiking a little bit and taking them out. And since they, since they get knocked down when they're damaged by the spell, I don't get to try and even tough from it. So if you throw that 11, they're just dead. And I rolled 11 twice in a row on two hollers. So like, and there I left one on one. Like. Yeah. So I just, I couldn't, I was like, your dice have got to give some time. So I just keep throwing them up there because I'm super in on this plan of just throwing as many howlers up as I can as speed bumps. Because there's always the the option of trying to like play the clock advantage because I do have the indicter that's really difficult for you to remove. And if I play a little more coy with hand of judgment, it's more, it's difficult for you to get rid of, but that doesn't work for me. I'm just going to throw him up there. So I march hand of judgment into the woods and uh, just because this way I can still threaten with him. Uh, I know that I haven't been getting a lot of use out of hand of judgment this game, even though he's really a really good character, Jack. Um, but, uh, it, this, I just feel like if I present him, then I, maybe it's just that I, I never respect, even after getting him killed by Scrapjack, I never respect his melee output, especially into an arm 19 heavy. Yeah. Without the bond damage, it's not as well. And you ran him up enough to get in feet range, which is, I was not expecting. Yep. So the, the Widowmaker Marksman and Yuri are both within range of my feet. So uh, I want to try and get those out of there as possible scoring options, and Yuri is also a pain in the butt. So the marksman goes down easy, and Yuri goes down, but that six up there means he's toughed. So my feet did work. Like, on those hollers, I got over 20 free damage because I killed two of them, left one on one, so that alone is six. That's 23. And one of them I rolled a three and didn't do damage to, so like, I did over 20 damage with my feet just for free, and then I still dinged up his jack. Like, I love this feat in Brawl Machine. Like, Yeah, in, in War Machine, or in 75 points, it doesn't feel so great, but uh, Old Witch feels like, I don't feel like she's busted. She just feels good. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit more about it there. I do apparate forward a little bit, uh, so I'm just measuring threats. Uh, I didn't measure it before I did the apparate, unfortunately, because I wasn't thinking about this till I moved up. I'm in charge range, but then I was like, what if I'm in slam range? Because I think everyone forgets slam has a 0.5 melee range. Yeah. Whereas it like, I think you used to have to get base to base, so I'm just out of the half inch. So I was like, if I can slam him out of the zone, the juggernaut could walk and throw that guy out of the zone, so maybe I could make a scenario play. Uh, and I could maybe do something cute, like running a Widowmaker and then throwing your jack at my Widowmaker to get it out of your control. But I opt uh, just not to. So I just go with Uriel. Uh, he had to sack his action to stand up because he was outside reach range when he feeded. So I couldn't do anything. So I opt just to walk into the woods and try to get out of like the Widowmaker's range as much as I can. That way, if he wants to punch me next turn, I'm def 16 with Tree Walker. And then I'm just checking Scrapjack's line of sight just to try and see what he can see. Because uh, he's just out on the edge of the woods. You can't see it, but there's another knockdown howler right behind the building. And I'm just trying to see where he can arc if I want to arc with him first before he goes by opt. With Avatar of Slaughter up and those three miles knocked down, uh, he can go up and he just starts punching. He auto hits. Uh, it's dice minus three because he's pow 14 because of Avatar of Slaughter. Uh, that one only took two damage, so I have to take my second initial into him. And then that kills. I get to overtake. And then I Berserk, auto hit, auto kill this one health and point guy, Berserk. And then I think we're doing the math, and that ends up not killing, so I have to take a second attack. Because I gave him three focus. I'm just out of overtake and reach range on Nasia, so I opt just to uh, overtake towards the building more, just to threaten her next turn and limit where she can walk and shoot her gun. And there we end up moving the building. Yeah, now. finally after Scrapjack did all his stuff, I'm like, I ah, will just show show scrapjack and a pile of nothing so i didn't upkeep the murder of crows we just didn't move it because there was howlers on top not on top of it but i apparated onto it first yeah. without thinking about picking it up so juggernaut goes in he's got his three focus old witch is sitting on three that i haven't moved with her it's also worth like i didn't i didn't think to plan out to put him outside of walk and punch range i put him inside i put him inside that so i probably could have left him outside of 
that so you could you'd have to charge him yeah but that was just poor positioning on my part and you end up taking him out easy peasy like he's not a hard he's not a ridiculously easy warjack to take out but it's just i'm dice been, damage he's been going down so easy yeah. this game i'm dice damage and he took some free damage from the feet yeah because he was within uh seven inches of me before i apparated so i apparated to walked for one inch melee so i actually had a focus left over just because like i hate when jacks come up short and uh, i don't really need my focus this turn so now widowmakers are walking up i'm i'm giving the indictor or indictor uh, an option he can either go for the juggernaut which i'm assuming he's gonna but now i'm just uh hunting some dudes in the back i can take a couple shots he only has one jack left so he just needs one choir but it's more about i'm trying to play the long game because i've taken a lot of his stuff off the board and now i think i can start to leverage the scenario because i'm starting to win the attrition trade and that's like the only time in my mind when this scenario becomes that live is when you're almost tabling your opponent like it's when it comes down to those last like you're down to four models i'm down to three and now all of a sudden like it's just your caster and one or two other dudes yeah it's a, it gives you a quick way to end the game i think when the attrition's down but it that it feels like on this scenario that doesn't happen till turn three or f like turn four yeah at the earliest so now devastator just walks up bases the forest and i'm deciding with old witch what to do with her folks if i should camp just so i maybe don't get killed because i'm not i don't want that to happen again but i opt to go for a boosted gallows into nasia through scrapjack it misses because she was behind the building uh, but then i just walk backwards into the forest more than three inches deep that way nothing can see me and then we both scored one With so few pieces, I need to make some really quick decisions and start. The, the best thing I can do is take out the things that Ethan has that can take out the few pieces I have left and try and do so in a way to try and leverage some clock advantage. I'm still pretty far up on Ethan, uh, even though he did go first. But I feel like in nine minutes, I can do what I need to to keep us at least even right now. And maybe I can do it a little quicker. So I decided to get uh, spicy with uh, with Nicaea and charge uh, Scrapjack at dice off eight. She ends up doing like almost all of his damage, like whatever his boxes are with four left. You left him on six. Six. Like, sorry, yeah. She did work. Didn't cripple anything though because of the way his grids are set. Exactly. Up. Yeah. It's like I, I almost one round him, but he's still got everything up. I mean, he's only got three systems: movement, arc node, and cortex. Yeah. He doesn't have arms. If you can't do that to a Crix Jack, though. Nope. No, no crab jack or uh, chickens. So next up, the choir goes to, uh, and we. I think I rolled something back to. You forgot to pull from the choir. Pull from the 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 rack. The rack. And I thought the rack positioning was going to blow it up, and unfortunately, I wasn't paying attention to the screen right now. Um, so I don't know if I would have actually blown one up or not. But I didn't think so when we played, and I don't like. I didn't think it mattered. We'll leave it for the people to decide. Yeah, I think um, the choir was out of the explosion range, so e either whatever. either way. I'm still able to get at least one on there to battle him up, which I'm kind of aiming for him to go into the uh, the juggernaut to try and take it out because I don't think that the Devastator can toss me around and be annoying and stuff, um, but the uh, but the juggernaut can actually kill him. So and there, I held up my phone because you did a boosted scorn into Crapjack or Scrapjack, Scrapjack and left him on melee. one stupid box. One box in his movement, so yeah. like <laughs> it was rough. So instead of going in for it again, I decided to not, because now that the rack's gone, Fiora has to keep on the flag in order to not fall back on scenario. So now we're going into that juggernaut, and uh, I think the dice turned out to be really average, not super above average. But you do but one I, round him at dice I, minus one. I did, yeah. So I guess it's a little over average. It, it was a little bit. A little bit, yeah. So I do exactly the thirty six or thirty four that I need to yeah. to get him down. So, so that kills him to the box with the last attack. Yep, that was a good one. Oh, so going into my turn, I'm up on attrition. I'm feeling good. Scrapjack, I think uh, in between the turns, I looked at this grid and I was like, man, his weapons aren't tied to a system. That's pretty neato. Uh, so I apparate out of Nasia's melee range. So that way I can walk behind her. Because I still have Avatar of Slaughter up. So I'm still Matt 7. But she's def 16. So I need 9. So if I can walk to her butt, I only need a 7. Uh, so then 
old witch. I just apparate around. I end up... I can't allocate anything to Scrapjack, so I believe I give two to the Devastator. I'm sitting on six. I upkeep Avatar of Slaughter for free. And now I'm just kind of walking through my turn. Because I know I'm going to try and throw some stuff. And then, and then there, the little thumbs up. Uh, I was marking for the camera because we had to look up the arc node rules. Because we couldn't remember if you could do it while you're engaging but not engaged. And that's the case. You can't arc node while you are engaged. And since I am out of his melee range, uh, I can arc node through, which I arc node a boosted gallows. And I believe I miss. So then I like I have enough focus to go for a hard nine. And that one actually hits. Yep. So now Nicaea has been, been taken off the table for all her hard work. And then I walk back to the flag behind the woods. So I'm feeling okay. Now Scrapjack can walk up. And he's in the melee range of the front choir. Hits the five he needs. Gets to overtake. Berserk into the back choir. Hits. Gets to overtake. Get a, Take a free shot at Fiona. Hits. Or not Fiona. Fiora. Fiora. Hits. Actually does a couple damage. Takes my second initial. Hits the eight. And then does a couple points. Like I'm not trying to kill her. It's just more of like I had the attacks. So yeah, like, you might as well take them. So now my game plan is to throw the jack out of the zone again. Because now this time around I have two working fists on my guy. So things are looking okay i force i boost the hit and then i win the strength check and throw him six inches out of the zone uh, boost damage it does no damage so then the widowmakers are walking to block his lane back to the devastator and get all in the zone and now they're all just auto pointing him to his shield so to call him five i want to say or call him one because he's it's his left arm just so that way maybe yeah. next turn like they can re-cripple it and then Yuri does a charge. I probably should have done Yuri first just to finish off a system. But I was debating running Yuri to the flag, but then I remembered uh, that's what Widget's for. Yeah, so, and Old Witch is on your flag. So now I score three to zero on that turn. Yep, so I think the way that this shakes out is you're at five points and I'm at three. You're and at we, two. Or two, yeah. So I, I need to try and not lose on scenario. So I'm going to be allocating an extra one over to my indicter. Um, they'll they'll have two on them. So it's unfortunate that I don't have any soulless stuff to proc off of accumulator anymore. But my unfortunate situation is that Fiora can't walk off the flag to punch uh, Scrapjack down because we do have uh, she's got full spite right now or her malice or whatever ability is her, her angry I get extra focus thing. Um, I think at this point we had determined that, or, uh, well, I guess so far I had I had scorned the the scrapjack to get it out of there, and then I just walked the indicter into the zone to contest it. Um, but then the way that things work out is all Ethan needs to do is walk his devastator over to contest my flag and win on scenario the next turn. So I end up pulling the plug on this one, and uh, old witch ends up taking it, even though Fiora came out hot from hot out the gates right away. Um, overall, I think that Fiora 4 is still a really good caster for Brawl Machine. I think you have to make some really tough choices with her list because she's the type of caster that wants a big battle group and an arc node, but the Menoth arc node's kind of pricey when you put in all these heavies and stuff, and I just feel like I can't ever play her without an Indicter and without um, Hand of Judgment. So pay getting a Revenger in means I lose the Howlers, and then I probably have to put in another like small unit or something. And maybe that's okay because the howlers are really like they feel situational anyways but i think this one could be a fun list to kind of mess with and get infernals back into uh brawl machine in terms of just seeing them more yeah i think hearts of darkness has game and like i think most people realize or maybe maybe they don't like uh princess isn't banned like i thought you should have pulled princess in right away because that's another like body like if you summon a shrieker and start admin admonitioner admonisher admonisher then you just take out a yeah you take out all my little dudes and get free damage on my jacks and i have to kill you i very much was really debating getting her in here hard it just felt like with turn one working or game one working out the way that it did i didn't feel like she needed to come in and then like i just really wanted to make the howlers function 
Mm-hmm. So I didn't feel like pulling them out for her. But in hindsight, it probably was a better idea to just wipe the Howlers out completely and bring in Solos. Because what was your free rec option? Nicaea. So, like, you could have swapped out. Because, like, I think Nicaea is cute. I don't know, like, if she's better than Princess in this scenario. Because, yeah, D-Cell doesn't matter. But, like, I have a bunch of solos and stuff that you can either A, summon an arc node and actually trivially contest my flag now. Because that's a speed 6 flying model. Like... Not every army just has that, and like your arc node's really good. I mean, that is your arc node. Yeah. Shriekers are good. Your lights are good. Like, it's a free light that you can just summon and contest every turn, and I can't stop you. Yeah, it probably was better to do. I, I'll definitely like tinker with some more lists for her as time goes on, but I think this this didn't feel terrible. No, and I was really happy with how Old Witch like performed game one. That was on me. Like, I should have walked back, but like. I, by game three, I got to leverage like Murder of Crows with this the scenario. This like was probably the best scenario for her in the packet. Absolutely, because I the she, new one even like that square yeah. in the middle was probably even better for me. Because then you'd be able to score two points and shut people out, and that's still a flag on like your side, I believe. Yeah, it is. It's offset, but like this scenario and that feat, like if I'm in the zone, you gotta give me your army and like. Knockdown infantry in Brawl Machine is so brutal. Yeah, because you, you're typically going to see people bringing a more balanced list because they need to make sure they have those elements to to score scenario and not go too deep into one thing. Um, but the uh, that auto knockdown, or not auto knockdown, but knockdown if they damage when you're more likely to, uh, is really harsh for a game that ends quickly. Yep, like it shuts down single wound infantry from getting in the zone. It really dings up medium-based infantry because, like, even if you're shield wall, like, the first guy has to get into the zone, and he's not shield walled unless you have some cute tactician stuff so you can be base to base while walking through. Yeah. And end your movements. But, like, I'm used to playing arm 17, arm 18 heavy, so, like, that pal 14 does work against your battle group, too. Like, it just. Even the arm 19 guy, it worked out. Yeah. Shaved off a whole column. I was spiking hard on them. And then, like,. Unless you have Rise, like, your infantry's just boned. Yeah, she. I think Old Witch 1 is definitely, for Kador players having a hard time figuring out what to play in Brawl Machine, I think that she's one that most people don't visit that often because she's just not that great in 75 anymore, even though I could argue that she's probably good in today's environment. Um, but the uh, but Brawl Machine, she seems like she's got a really good home in because she's a super active caster, has a lot of movement shenanigans, and as long as you start utilizing your heavies a little bit differently, like Ethan did with the slams and throws, uh, you can really do a lot of work. I think oftentimes Kador players are like the ones who don't interact with power attacks the most, even though they benefit the most from them. So, Because usually you just put a juggernaut on something, it dies. You don't need to throw it around or anything. So I think that this was a good showcase for all the options that Kador has for people who might think that the Old Witch is just not a very dynamic caster. Yeah, Old Witch won. Like, the only thing she really lacks is a way to crank like damage, damage cracking. Yeah. And like, I had tried to get Sorsha Zero in the list with a Berserker, just like the cheapest I could. Like That would take out the Widowmakers and my rec option. So I'd have to either like lose Uriel or like the Chaosi. And I wanted to try and play a, a semi-balanced list. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like boundless charge on top of apparate means a juggernaut threatens 12. Because speed 4, apparate 2, boundless charge 2. So that's 8. You charge 11. So you threaten 12. Yep. So like that's a whole zone. And with your feet up, it's pretty hard to get the alpha. Especially with Murder of Crows being an AoE 5 cloud that also does damage. Mm-hmm. Like I think people forget it does a power 8. Like, that's another just anti-single wound tech. Her list just mulches infantry. Yeah, and you can, like I said, when you're not doing infantry, you can control the heavies pretty well. So overall, I think this game worked out pretty well for you. Yep. And Avatar of Slaughter is just so good. And the Reach Jack. Why does he have Reach? He's just a <laughs> why weird. Are, why are his anomaly. legs not tied to his movement? He's such Why a, is he so good? He's, I love he's, Scrap Jack. He's a great Jack, yeah. 